the Mariner, the PBM 3C, a twin-engine gull-wing flying boat capable of carrying large bomb loads. This airplane differs from the PBM-1 in that it has fixed instead of retractable wing floats. Four-bladed props are used, and because of this, limiting manifold pressures and RPMs will differ slightly from those recommended for the same airplane equipped with three-bladed propellers. Let's go aboard and see her operating procedures and determine her flight characteristics. Note carefully the technique of starting the engines, which ordinarily is done by the flight engineer before the pilots man the plane. The main engines are started one at a time. The auxiliary generator is delivering 28.6 volts and wing tanks are full. Engine selector valves set to hull tanks. Carburetor air, direct. Mixture, automatic rich. Blower, in low ratio. Throttles cracked to give six to 700 RPM. Props in full low pitch, high RPM. Cowl flaps will be open for starting. Auxiliary generator switch, on. Transfer pump switches on automatic. Mesh the starter for a few revs of the engine to clear excess oil out of the cylinders. Energize the starter for not more than 15 seconds. While this is being done, prime the engine. The amount will depend on the temperature under which you are operating. Turn the mags on and mesh the starter. You may have to use the primer from time to time until the engine smooths out. Running smoothly without priming, switch over to the service tank. If oil and fuel gauges indicate the proper pressures, advance throttles to 1,000 RPM. Run engines at 1,000 until the oil in temperature is approximately 50 degrees centigrade and cylinder head temperatures between 150 degrees and 200 degrees. Advance the throttle to 1,500 RPM and check your pressure. Oil pressure should be 75 to 90 pounds. Fuel pressure, 6 to 7 pounds indicated. Vacuum, at least 4 inches indicated. Then the engines are synchronized by checking RPM and manifold pressure. Check the flow meters for the same purpose. The engines are now warmed up, running smoothly, and ready for testing. The quadrant is checked to make sure that the propellers are in full low pitch. Now let's check the automatic pilot. Be sure the T-valve is in the down position. Turn the switch on the pedestal to start the pump. Neutralize the controls and uncage the gyros. Match the pointers and set your directional gyros. Be sure the rudder selector valve is turned to gyro pilot, not to bomb sight. Check to see that speed valves are open. Then open the oil control valve. Check knobs to see that controls react normally. And that oil pressure is at 140 pounds. When you are satisfied, close the control valve. Next, rev up to about 1800 
and with prop set in manual, check the mags by operating the engine first on one mag and then on the other. A drop of not more than 75 RPM is considered normal when running on one mag. Make this check fairly quickly so as not to foul the plug. To check your prop, put the switch in manual and test both increase and decrease. If the tack shows the proper response, return the switch to automatic. Now put the prop control in positive high pitch. And observe tack to see if it drops normally. Finally, return to full low pitch and close the throttle. It's a good idea to check idling on both alternate and direct carburetor air. All of these tests should be made with the airplane headed into the wind. plane has been freed of its beaching gear and is waterborne, the pilot signals to cast off the tail line. Finally, the bow line is cast off and all stations are told to secure for flight. Taxiing should be done with flaps up and engines at minimum RPM to prevent overheating. Maintain a slow speed consistent with safety and directional control until you have a report that the lower deck is secured for takeoff. These engines may not cool properly while taxiing, so the flight engineer should be asked to report cylinder head temperatures. Then, if necessary, you must wait for them to cool. go through the checkoff list methodically. It's right there in plain view. Wing tanks full, fuel pressure normal, oil temperature normal, wing flaps down to 30 degrees, mooring gear and fueling door secure, flying controls unlocked, carburetor air direct. Trim the tabs, elevator three degrees nose up. Aileron neutral. And rudder four degrees right. These settings will, of course, vary in different airplanes. Be sure the loading manifest has been complied with. Center of gravity is important in any big airplane. Crew at stations with belts fastened. Bomb sight sliding doors locked. All hatches and watertight doors closed. Electrical circuit is complete and prop set for maximum 2800 RPM. Engine cowl flaps open or close depending on the local conditions. Supercharger locked in low ratio. Trailing antenna standpipes closed. Your takeoff should be made. of 44 and one-half inches at 2600 rpm head temperature must not exceed 248 degrees centigrade the plane will tend to pull off to the left so be alert and careful as you make your takeoff run as soon as you're on the step directional control is excellent always start your takeoff into the wind 
and make any changes in direction after you're on the step. As soon as you're airborne, reduce your manifold pressure to 38 and a half inches and adjust prop controls for 2400 RPM. This is a normal rated power climb. A partial power climb should be used when the tactical situation permits more economical operating limits. At sea level, you may make a military climb at 43 inches with 2600 RPM. But after five minutes, you must reduce power for continuous operation. When you have above 90 knots and 300 feet, raise the wing flaps. As the flaps come up, trim your ship with the tabs. If cylinder head temperatures go up, the flight engineer will open the cowl flaps with a resultant drag. Watch out for this, and be sure the crew remains where they are until you send them to cruising stations. For continuous operation in low blower, don't use more than 38 and one half inches below 7,000 feet. At 7,000 feet, use 37 and a half inches. And don't increase your throttle setting as long as the low blower ratio is continued. When the pilot can't get power, somewhere between 7,800 and 11,000, he will call for high blower. Mixture control should be in automatic rich. The throttle should be partially closed so as not to overspeed. Move the blower control rapidly. Be sure it is in the full high position and locked. After the change has been made, the pilot will readjust his throttle and RPM setting as necessary to obtain the desired power. For gradual climb at cruising power, the mixture control may be in the automatic lean position. Watch the cylinder head temperatures to prevent exceeding their limits. If the temperatures become excessive, the cowl flap should be opened and the carburetor richened to cool the engine. If you come up to your cruising altitude with partial power, it's more efficient and more economical to go a few hundred feet above then level off and enter the desired altitude with a little increased speed and you will have no trouble maintaining your altitude. Remember that the loading trim for takeoff is not necessarily the best trim for cruising. Ordinarily, a slight nose-heavy condition is the best. As you level off for cruising, remember that you'll get better range in low blower than you will in high. If you find you haven't quite sufficient power to maintain your altitude, Pick up your speed and reduce power again. Don't inch the throttles forward, you'll waste fuel. Recommended cruise is about 28 inches manifold pressure at 1900 RPM in cruising lean. The mixture may be leaned out manually beyond cruising lean. Manual leaning is done in conjunction with the flow meter and torque meter. Whenever it is necessary to open the doors of the bomb bay, your flying speed will be reduced by at least 10 knots. Anticipate this by making sure you have ample speed to prevent stalling. This airplane was designed for straight and level flight with as much endurance and range as possible for her heavy military load. She is restricted to normal maneuvers. For maximum power operation, put your mixture control in automatic rich and don't exceed 40 inches at 2400 in low blower, 37.8 inches at 6700 feet. In high blower, don't exceed 2400 RPM and 40.4 inches at 9800 feet or 38.8 inches at 14,900 feet. If it is necessary to dive this airplane, be careful not to exceed 3100 RPM. The mixture control will be in automatic rich and supercharger in low blower. The throttle position will depend on the angle of the dive, but pull enough power to prevent too rapid cooling and consequent warping of the valve. power off, 
Now, this airplane stalls around 80 knots, depending on your load. The nose is getting very heavy. And there she goes. You lose a lot of altitude, perhaps 1,500 feet, but her recovery is entirely normal. method of feathering the prop is to close the throttle, operate the emergency feathering control, and cut the ignition. For practice in single engine operation, decrease pitch and boost manifold pressure on the engine you intend to fly on. Before you cut the other engine, throttle back slowly to cool it gradually. When throttle is closed, Put the mixture in idle cutoff and decrease RPM with manual prop control switch until the prop stops. Then cut your ignition switch. To restart the engine, go through the same routine in reverse order. With one engine out, you'll have to adjust the rudder tab as may be necessary. To maintain flight at the normal gross weight of 48,000 pounds, you need a speed of around 110 knots. After lightening the airplane as much as you can, accept the smallest possible rate of descent that will keep that speed at 110 knots. It's a wise precaution to have all hands stand by for a landing while you're still some distance from the landing area. This will give you plenty of time to check the loading. You may want to move some of the men aft to get the airplane balanced properly. The bigger the airplane, the more important are your weight differentials and MAC, especially in a stall landing. You'll want your mixture in automatic ridge. It's sound policy not to lower your flaps in a turn. In case of a flap failure, you might be thrown into a dangerous attitude. Get below 108 knots and lower your flaps down 30 degrees. Be sure the bomb bay door and the bomb sight doors are reported closed. Guns will be positioned locked. All hatches and gun doors secured. Cowl flaps adjusted as required by engine temperatures. Radio antenna will be retracted and locked. The watertight doors must be closed. Ventilators on the side of the hull should be closed. The drift sight should be housed and every man at his station. Props in automatic, and after you have reduced power, governed to 2,600 RPM. If you want to level off or turn with your flaps down, be sure to have at least 95 knots to maintain flight. Normal power glide with flaps down is 90 knots. Slower down, break your glide, and get that nose up. There's a nice, smooth landing. Where depth perception is difficult, set glide between 85 and 88 knots, a rate of descent of about 250 feet a minute, and regulate the glide with the throttle. Ease them back when you touch or you'll leap like a frog. There we are, a good power landing. As the mariner returns to the beach, the crew is stationed for beach approach. And if necessary, sea anchors may be put out to retard forward speed. PBM-3C is a big, comfortable, responsive airplane with no abnormal characteristics. She requires only to be loaded carefully 
and flown within the limitations of her design. She is armed to defend herself adequately, and the lethal eggs in her bomb bays are capable of deadly destruction. <laughs>